7, 7, 7, 7. Four sevens in a row. That's sounding kind of fishy. You know, the question of whether these dice are fair reminds me of some kinds of physics research you hear about in the press. You know, the kind where they talk about whether something's been discovered or not? It turns out that figuring out if the discovery is real is, or is just a matter of luck is exactly the same thing as figuring out whether a set of dice is fair or not. For lots of searches for new phenomena, you're looking to see more of something than you expect. In, in physics, it could be a particular kind of collision. While in shooting dice, it could be the number of sevens appearing an unusual number of times. The real question is what do you expect and what role randomness plays in your expectation? Frontier physics can seem a little intimidating. So let's use this die to illustrate the point. Suppose you roll this die 12 times and it comes up sixes each time. Surely this seems improbable. Is it possible, just very unlikely? Suppose that you hypothesize that the die is unfair. What can statistics teach you about this? To study this, let's start with a die that we know to be fair. Since each die has six sides, if you roll it six times, you'd expect to roll a six once on average if the die is fair. Similarly, if you roll the die 12 times, you expect on average to roll a six twice. But that phrase, on average, is important. You know fully well that if you roll the die 12 times, you might get zero sixes or maybe four of them. But could you get 12? Well, the short answer is yes, that is a possible outcome. But how likely is it? To answer that question, we could throw the fair die 12 times and count the number of sixes. We could repeat this experiment many times to find out how often each configuration occurs. Or we can use math to work it out. These are entirely equivalent. When we do this, we find that even with fair dice, we expect to roll no sixes about 11% of the time. We expect to roll a single six about 27% of the time. It turns out that we expect to roll two sixes about 30% of the time, which means that we expect to roll something other than two sixes about 70% of the time. That's the first lesson. The obvious expectation is wrong. We can work out the probabilities for all configurations. We find that the chance of rolling eight sixes is about 0.01%. Rolling 12 sixes is even less likely, although there's a small chance that it'll happen. We can use this graph here to illustrate the final points. On the horizontal axis, it shows the number of sixes that appear when you roll a die 12 times. On the vertical axis, it shows how often you expect it to happen. We see that if we roll a die 12 times, we shouldn't be at all surprised if we roll a six anywhere between zero and six times. To ask if a die is loaded to favor rolling a six, one question one can ask is, how likely is it to roll that many sixes or more? To do that, you have to add probabilities. For instance, there's about a 4% chance of rolling five or more sixes. So rolling a six five times is something that can happen even with a fair die. In contrast, there is only a 0.00008% chance of rolling 10 sixes or more. That's unlikely enough that it's a reasonable to believe that it probably didn't happen by chance. If you've listened to the news, you might have heard the term sigma. A sigma is a measure of how wide a plot is. Unless you're a math buff, it's actually not all that important and has confused many an amateur scientist. What is really important is when we convert sigmas to probability. For particle physics, what matters are three sigma and five sigma. Three sigma means that this will happen by chance about one time in 740. That's rare enough to say that what you saw is very unlikely and this is the official threshold in particle physics to say that you have some evidence that maybe something new is occurring. Three sigma is defined to be evidence. However, the big threshold is five sigma. Five sigma means this will happen by chance one time in about three and a half million. This is extremely rare, and particle physicists have set this arbitrary threshold to claim that we've discovered something. Five sigma is defined to be observation. There are a couple of important points to remember. First is that this five sigma threshold is really arbitrary. Some biologists claim that they've discovered something with a threshold of three sigma. Basically, if there's only a chance in about 740 that what they've observed could have happened by accident, then they conclude that they've found something new. Another important point is that what we're talking about is statistics. 
Thus, nothing is ever absolute. For particle physicists to say that what they've observed only has one chance in three and a half million doesn't mean that they couldn't have found the one unusual case. After all, rare things happen. People do win the lottery. And if you set your threshold at one chance in a thousand to claim evidence, if you look at 10,000 measurements, you expect to see that kind of random fluctuation maybe 10 times. Further, it's possible that a simple mistake might have been made, meaning that your probability estimate is incorrect. So scientists don't rest when they see a five sigma discovery. They continue to gather more data to further decrease the odds that what they saw was an accident. They look for independent evidence. While that is universally true, we can use the search for the Higgs boson as an illustration. There are many ways in which the Higgs boson is predicted to decay. For instance, decaying into two bottom quarks, or two photons, or two Z bosons. If scientists see an excess in all of these different decay patterns, that greatly strengthens their conclusion. While any single decay pattern might have an excess purely by chance, to have random excesses in many different decay patterns is even more unlikely. So that's all there is to this discovery thing. What scientists are doing is exactly the same as trying to figure out if a die is loaded. We calculate how likely it is that what was observed could have happened purely by chance. If the chances are unlikely enough, we can conclude that we've discovered something. And then it's time to celebrate.